It's time for Gadget Talk, monthly, actually lately, twice a month, <laughs> Creative Cast Show brought to you by the Geocache Talk Geocaching Network. If you're watching live, you can be part of the adventure tonight. Join us in the chat room, participate with others as they watch the show. The link to the chat room is on the Geocache Talk front page. If you're listening later, please give it a like and subscribe on YouTube or Facebook or Twitch. And now here's your Gadget Talk host, Chad Champion, a.k.a. Bounce Bounce. Thanks, Gary. You want to mention our sponsor? Boun uh, yes. Our sponsor is Logwork, the creators of the fantastic logbook made with genuine write-in-the-rain paper. The logbook's designed for the micro containers of the future. It could be other. doesn't have to be micro. It could be any, really any size. Uh, present, future, geared toward the hider wants to go caching rather than doing cache maintenance find them at logwork l-o-g-w-e-r-k dot com back to you all right great well i want to welcome everybody here to the may 12th uh gadget talk um what we're going to be covering tonight are buttons and switches and as you can see we have uh dave wagner dj w house back uh as he's going to cover some of these switches uh as well so the reason why we're covering switches is because switches are used on a lot of creative caches and we're going to be moving towards uh of doing more switches uh, creating caches with more switches here in the future so it's always good to cover uh the switches or it's a good idea too so on switches there's many different types of switches out there and um one thing here my show notes you just moved them um so you have two different types of switches you got mechanical and you have electronic switches. Um, first of all, we're gonna cover uh, mechanical switches. Now, lots of different types of mechanical switches. Um, there are arcade, road, rotary, toggle, slide, water, pressure, momentary, uh, normally open, normally closed, uh, photo resistor, push button, limit, float, temperature, joystick, and keypad switches. And there's other ones besides that as well um, that there are, but we're just, we're not even going to cover all those switches, but those are the ones that I most commonly use or caches that I know use uh, on their geocaches. Uh, and then you have also more of the electronic switches or software switches uh, that Dave will be covering here a little bit later on. So here we'll start out. So on switches, when you're when you're looking at switches, so switches are either they're done manually, right? So you activate them manually by either pushing them or sliding the switch over um, that uh, will contact uh, or I'm sorry, that hold their position when pressed into a state. So this gives a fully on or off state uh, to the switch or to the, the power, whatever you're trying to do with the switch. So um, let's go over here on some of these switches that we're going to talk about. So let's start with uh, arcade switches. Actually, no, let's start with toggle switches. This is actually going to be on our build here uh, in two weeks is toggle switches. So we'll start with that one. Um, let me pull up my cam here. So on these switches here, you'll have a toggle switch. Now there's two different types of toggle switches. There's the on off or normally, normally closed switch, right? It's just a rate basic on off toggle switch. And then you have your momentary switch that give that gives you it's only a momentary push. So when you push it one way, it's creating the state of the contact. And then when you let go, it goes back uh, to without the contact. So everything will shut off. So it, this one will go either way uh, on that and then versus the one here that only goes on and off. Um, and the way that that these work is switched my screen. Um, if you look at them over here, you have a push button switch here that when the when the button is not pushed, uh, it's it's uh, open. And then when you 
press the button, it's it's closed. Um, and so then that creates the electric electricity to whatever you're trying to power, either a screen or LEDs or whatever. And then you have your toggle switch over here on your right hand side uh, that is open and closed. It, it works pretty much the same way. Uh, it's just a toggle switch on those. And these come in other options rather than just these two bigger ones. They actually come in these smaller type of, this is an, again, another momentary switch. It's an on off on switch. So it's on off and on. And the, the momentaries are awfully nice for caches because people don't leave them set in the wrong direction too. You can force them uh, to be reset when they walk away, they're back like they're supposed to be. They're kind of nice. Yes. And that's why I use a lot the momentary ones on my, on my right. uh, cache. So yeah, you can't leave them. Um, another good thing about these momentary switches, I'm showing you two different sizes, but on the bigger ones here that you see, you can actually get this uh, weather proof, weather resistant case here that actually goes over the switch. And this is a rubber oh, case. Nice. That's yeah. a yeah. Seattle boot, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So you stick it on there and then that allows it to be more water resistant than just having it open. So if it's exposed to the weather, it's a little bit nicer of an option there. Um, and then um, from there, well, let's go to uh, our arcade switches. So arcade switches come in many different styles and sizes. So you can see this one here is a big one you usually see on Simon Says caches. Um, I believe this is a 100 millimeter uh, switch. And then there's a 40 millimeter switches. And then you can go down to, I believe these are 10 uh, millimeter arcade switches here. Um, and then I also carry, I like the square ones as well uh, that you have. Definitely some of the favorites for caches. You can do so much with them. Oh yeah, they are. I, I use these 100 millimeter ones a lot. So they're, they're fun. Um, and then the nice thing about these, these switches or these push buttons, these arcade buttons, is they're momentary. So they're only operating when you push on it. And as soon as you let go of it, it will shut off. Um, there's, there's two different types. This is the nicer arcade button switch here that we'll go over here in a minute. And then you have your cheaper one here that just has an on-off push button. And then the other side is LED. So they'll light up. Uh, so you can actually, so it looks cool when it lights up. I like to put letters or numbers. I don't know if we can make that clear, but, uh, inside the buttons. Um, so I have some trivia ones that have A, B and C, but you can put anything in there you want. You can put a picture of someone or a color. You can also change the color of the led as well. You, you can get those caps off and put something on the inside or does it go on the outside? Uh, it goes on the inside, and I'll show on this nice. one here how to do that. Um, on these push button or these arcade switches, I wonder if I should pull this down a little bit. Um, these on the arcade button switches for this style, this here pops off, it twists, and you have your LED in the end of it there that comes out, and you can actually change the resistor and the color of the LED if you want to. Oh, very cool. Uh, and these are 12 volts, so you can change the resistor to a lower, lower voltage if you would like. Uh, and then it's also easy to change out the bulb if anything happens to her, the LED. Pop that back in. And then um, also on these is you have, this one's a pretty basic, uh, normally, uh, uh, normally open uh, switch, right? So when the it only closes or activates the, the LED when this closes, right? When you push the switch. So when you have this in here, on this side here, you can kind of see a little lat switch in there. So when you push the button, it activates that switch. Um, so, but if you want to switch this to a normally open, normally closed one, um, it's very easy to change that out. Put it on my screwdriver right here. There we go. Um, you can actually pop these off and change these out. So if something goes wrong with this button or this little switch, you don't have to replace the whole thing. You could just buy the switch kit here. You go from this side. So this opens up and pops out. And then this is actually the button part. And then this is just the LED. 
part here. And you can switch it out to one of these switches that now has a, so we can get it to focus. Huh. I just want to focus. It, yeah. Sometimes you have to kind of put your hand, but yeah, you're there. Give it a second. <laughs> oh, there's a lot behind it. You have to kind of block. Yeah. It's a two hander. Yeah, do a two hander on. But put, put your hand. There you go. There you go. There we go. There we go. Says it. Okay, so <laughs> you have the two leads here. The two normally normally closed, which you can actually see on. I don't know if you can see it on that side. There you can oh, kind right. of see the NC and the NO. Yeah. There, so you can wire it to either be open or closed on it. So um, you can just switch that out, and these actually just are can pop right back into these switches here. Yeah. Right into the LED light. And, and Chad, those tabs are kind of nice for putting connections on too. You can uh, use crimp style slide ons and things like that. It makes it very easy to hook them up and uh, disconnect them to take them out. No soldering required again. Yeah. And then and the nice thing about them too, is if you pull all your wires off, um, these are actually a bigger size connector than these ones. So you won't get them mixed up, but, uh, or you shouldn't, but anyway, so now you have the option for normally open and normally closed. Well, you might think, well, why would I want to do that? Well, there's different puzzles you can use that for. So I have an example here as well of a puzzle that I just made. Um, Dave sent me this idea, actually. Um, so this is a nine button puzzle. And so if you want to get the LEDs to light up to give you the code, um, you can actually have it pop a latch. Um, you can have it do a lot of different things. Again, it's your imagination is, you know, you can you can make it. We're just kind of giving you a way to, to think about it and point. And this actually will be our build here in June coming up. So you can push any button you want, and the lights aren't going to come on. You have to push them in the correct sequence to get the lights to come on. And this one here I have like this. And you can see the LEDs up here are turning on. So you have to push the exact ones to make it turn on. And then that's where they normally open and normally close parts of that button right option come in handy because on the back side there's a lot of wiring um you bring your power in to one which is here and you come out from normally open or normally closed into the next one and then out from there with normally open, normally closed so you have to decide which ones you want on or off and then you just chain them up into a, a chain or a link of linking them all together um in sequence and then the very end one goes out to the leds the power to led of course where your battery goes directly to your your negative uh or your cathode of your led um that you want and then that is how you make this work so it's a fairly simple thing and hey, there's Chad, a lot why are you, yeah, you doing that push push all the correct buttons yeah oh, then, push the one extra, then push the extra button push an extra one yeah, see, oh. if you don't get the exact combination, it isn't going to work. Yeah. And it has to be exact. You, can, you can't. you can Some people will be like, well, if I just push them all at one time, then it will light up. The nor When you have it mixed up, the closer than open, it will actually, it doesn't complete the circuit, right? It opens the circuit back up. So then it won't work, right? So everyone has to be, the correct ones have to be pushed. And the incorrect ones cannot be pushed for it to work. And I didn't see, um, maybe, I don't know if anybody might have missed it as well, but you got lights at the top. I didn't know, uh, maybe. Oh, yeah, 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 the LEDs up here. There's LEDs um, at the top. So right, that, I just have the white ones there that light up. Yeah, exactly, but, yeah, perfect. And these switches light up. I didn't want to run um, the battery up to them. I actually just put this together a few hours ago because yeah, I was being lazy. So, um, but, uh, yeah, these are light up. And a fun thing you could do um, is you could actually change the LEDs in these. Mm -hmm. And when you push it, it, it lights up a certain color. And you can have all different colors of LEDs in here. And you have to, maybe the puzzle's a color puzzle, right? You have to push certain colors to make it light up. Um, Dave was saying the other day, maybe you have to push the different flag colors. So like the US mm -hmm. and French and Mexico, right? You have to push their flag colors all at one time. And yeah, yeah, Corey, we, we did a whole show on batteries. Corey, what's yeah. going on, man? You missed it. Yeah, I don't have the double A's in these, but yeah, if you go back to that show, Dave can probably bring that up here a little bit later on, but we would have to measure the, the voltage of this thing 
how much it's putting out to see if you're using the LEDs, obviously it's not going to last as long as batteries. Right. Um, but if you're just using the buttons and you're just completing a circuit for a few seconds, it's going to last a long time. Yeah. That's the magic of the momentary context. There is your, the, the battery, let's say has a, a, you know, will last a thousand hours or something like that at a milliamp. So it lasts 500 hours, but you're only touching it for five seconds or 10 seconds. So yeah, there's a lot of seconds in an hour or so. Essentially, you'll probably be repairing it for some other corrosion rather than replacing a battery uh, just to light some LEDs. So that's the nice thing about a push button. Yeah. And right. even if you had the LEDs connected so they only turn on when you push on it, that's limiting how much power they're using. Now, if you have them turn on all the time when someone's looking at it or trying to solve the puzzle, then that's going to drain a lot more power. Right. And um, as, we, as, as Dave taught us, you could plan on using double A's instead of nine volt. <laughs> See, I was paying attention. <laughs> you know, you can always upgrade. Yeah. There you go. Um, Tom had an interesting point. He said, I would, ha I would have a bunch of LEDs with numbers underneath. Only three or four would light up to give a code. Your color idea is great too. So I, I like that too. Yeah. You can, again, you can make it however you want um, to it's do it. These do light up the buttons do. So, um, it's it's kind of nice. One of, one of the reasons there's nine buttons, not six or some other, if you start looking at the combinations of pushing four or five buttons out of nine, right? Uh, it does add up to enough that someone could, by trial and error, not knowing whether it's four or five or three buttons, they could eventually get there. But it's enough to make it painful. It makes it more uh, beneficial to solve the puzzle than to move on. Nine will work great if you did a dozen. I mean, it's just adding a few more switches. Uh, now you're to the point of where you know six of twelve in combination, but you can't push the wrong ones. That's it gets pretty improbable to discover that. It makes it a lot more difficult. You've got to solve the puzzle essentially. That's very cool. Yeah. Sorry, just adjusting my camera so I have the whole thing in the screen. So yeah. So another thing you could do is you could put numbers inside these, like Dave was mentioning earlier. Or you can put faces of people if you have some kind of clue game or, or tools or something like that. You can put that in there. If you have a clue series and this is a final, you could actually have enough of these to have every tool or person or, what you know, I, I don't remember, room that the clue has. And have to push the right ones to to get it, to get the, the final cords or open up a, a final button. Right. You can make... Uh, seven different versions of these, all with different puzzles, but the same mechanics with just different connections to make the solution a little different. So it's yeah. easy to get a series out of something like that, I think, too. Yeah. Yeah. So on the the button here, let's show you how you can put a number inside of it or, or uh, a picture is you unscrew the nut that holds it in place. Um, then you pull these, you, you push these white tabs together and the button the inside of the button if i say it right if i do it right here it goes oh goes out the other way <laughs> uh comes out and then this is actually your whole button system this is actually what pushes on the the button here on side your switch uh and then the plastic end here comes off here and this white piece will come out Son of a gun. You didn't know that, Dave? No. You know, this is why I watch this show. <laughs> yeah. This comes out, and, and Dave's asked me actually about this because on my trivia game, I have them inside. Um, you would put your face or your number on this part. Now, I'd use something translucent. Otherwise, the light's not going to come through. Now, these arcade buttons you can get that do not light up. Um, but I myself prefer the light up ones, but you can get them. So they don't light up. They actually are a little bit cheaper or more affordable for you if you get them that way, but and they save your battery power too. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, anyway, so you can put your number on there or your picture or whatever you want, pop it back on there and then just put it back together the opposite way that we just took it apart. Look, I'm I, forgetting. I, I probably used, I probably used 25 or 30 of those buttons. And I've never realized that they come apart like that. That's, yeah, that's yeah. Nice. I, and I didn't bring my. Oh, actually, that's why I came to watch the show tonight. So I oh, <laughs> I have it here. I have some round ones on my old trivia game that I took apart that are on the inside, so you can actually see that the 
Now I understand. The numbers, the, the letters are on the inside. And oh, these yeah. are translucent, so they actually, these light up so they can you can see the light through them. Um, see, it's good to keep old stuff laying around. Chad had a good yeah. idea about uh, making one of them uh, with U UV written on That'd it. That'd be good. To give another, another, you could twist another twist. Yeah, that would be fun. And there's, there's so many different ways to do it. And, you know, there's so many creative people out there that it, it's fun. It's what makes us fun, right? Is we're just kind of giving you some ideas and then you yeah. just, you go to town with it. Yeah. And uh, I'm not sure if that was Chad's intention or not, but you can get UV LEDs. Uh, so when the LED is lit up, it would illuminate what, wouldn't otherwise be seen too so you don't need a uv uh, right okay. well, that's cool yeah. i know that that's cool yeah and if you're trying to do these in all different colors a uv would be purple so uh you could do orange yellow red you know whatever you want there's green uh pink uh blue you know whatever there's so many different colors you could actually make these all different colors if you wanted to love it so that will be a june build we'll actually cover that more in june Cool. So we'll yeah. move on from there. Um, one thing I, I also didn't mention on the toggles as an option is we have you have these here uh, safety latch switches here, right? So people don't accidentally turn them on. Um, and so uh, they actually have a light up LED on the end of them. And so when you turn it on, um, it will actually light up. Right. And then you, when you shut it, it shuts the thing down. So this is so no one accidentally turns something on or off. You could switch it. You could turn it the other way if you wanted to. Um, and again, it's just normally open uh, switch on off switch for it. But these are really fun. I If you'll see a lot of my caches, I use these on a lot of my caches. <laughs> so Jesse, the chat room says that's a turbo boost button. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Save it for when you need it, yeah. Yeah, you see yeah. those all the time. Hey, Dr. D. Glad you're um, Another type of an arcade button are these little ones here. And these I found as well because I was going to do a little tiny Simon Says inside of a, a small ammo can box. Yeah. Uh, and so it's the same thing. They light up. They're different colors. And this actually comes already with – hard to get it to focus. It actually already has normal open, normally closed on it. So you can actually make this into that other cache. A lot smaller, it saves you a lot of room if you want to uh, use something like this if you have a smaller cache. Right, smaller box. Or you want to put yeah. 22 of them in an ammo box, that'd be good too. Yeah. <laughs> you need uh, 10 fingers, uh, 12 fingers, that's the way you got to do it. Evil yeah. Dave's coming out tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's good, I like it. And so on to moment, just on to regular momentary buttons. Um, I have lots of different, and there are lots of different momentary buttons out here. This is one here. That's just, they come in lots of different colors, a whole variety of them. And you just push it. As soon as you let release, it lets, it uh, takes power away or releases the power. Sure. The context. So um, this would be a good one inside of a container. If you want somebody to be able to push and hold it to have the cash come on, and then when right. you're done with it, as soon as they let go, it goes off. Um, I have that on a couple of mine that have the blinky lights, so you actually have to hold it to have the count the lights. And then this one is the same thing, but this is a water-resistant one. Here, oh, wow. And I use a lot of these. Um, these, again, come in a lot of a big variety of colors as well um, out there. And, so, and I've had these. These are the water-resistant ones that I've had out. For over three years and they're exposed to wa the weather right. Um, right out right in the water i've never had an issue with them so same type of thing just a push button uh weatherproof uh switch or button i mean push button yep um you have micro buttons that are micro push buttons as well um and then there's if you're doing a uh uh breadboard cash or you're, you're designing something there are also the the switch or the arduino board or uh breadboard switches here that actually pop into the breadboards so oh, you can right. actually test what you're making before you actually solder it sorry that's focus. Cool. yeah no, you're good. Uh, it's not that great but um yeah anyway 
Oh, I, there we go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you got to do like eighty percent of the screen, then it, then it focuses. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You get camera that does it. Yeah. Um, and then uh, you have some more toggle buttons here, just regular on and off. I don't need to go over them too much. It's just an on and off button. A lot of people see these. And then there's some different type of uh, toggle momentary switch on. So it's it's on off on switch. Yeah. Like you said, the momentary is when people are building. I, I, I don't know if I guess you've run into those, both of you guys. I have I ran into a situation like that, even though I labeled it, begging them, please turn it off when you leave. They, <laughs> they don't. So if it's, I love the momentary one, that's perfect. Yeah, they, they work really well. Instead of just to click on, because they click on and they go, oh, yeah, that was a great cash. They walk away and. No power. Then you're out there. The next person DNFs it because there's no power. Yeah, there's no power. Yeah, that little round switch that you showed, Chad, there um, was the this one. Uh, no, no, the uh, the black one with the zero and the one on it. That's the same yeah. exact switch I put on my uh, assignment game. Nope. The big one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the, yeah. There you go. I um, put that okay. on the yeah. game. Yeah. And I just told people to turn it off. And it's such a nice looking switch. It's small, and I end up having to put a little metal uh, bent piece onto the door. So at least when they close the door, it would push that little switch and turn it off. Uh, yeah, it, if you want to keep power onto something, you've got to come up with something more clever to make sure it turns off. A door switch, some way to to turn it off. When you, yes, because you've kind of I wouldn't say rebuilt, but you you went back and did some modifications on the the tardis right that you did did you could you to change some of the to make sure that everything fun i mean it functioned but did you go back and change any of your switches to make sure they those kind of things didn't happen or well yeah as you're learning you're changing on the tardis uh we had hall effect switches on there or right. not, i keep calling hall effect magnetic read switches Okay. On there, and uh, it, they kept burning up because of the amount of current that went current. through. All these switches Chad is showing here, they'll they'll handle anything, uh, yeah. but the read switch is not the case. In yeah, we ended up flipping out switches because they wouldn't do the job. But same thing, door closed, unit turns off. That's the the best and really the only way to do it if you uh, uh, don't have something smart inside to do it for you. Right. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, with switches, if you're if you're using a switch on a basic cache where you're you're just trying to activate some LEDs um, or a latch, uh, as long as you have the right amount of power to activate those, you don't have to worry too much about amps or volts. But right. as soon as you get into electronic stuff, you really need to to worry about that stuff because it it will affect the way that the cache works. Cool. Um, so, and then the door switch that Gary, I think you mentioned that, right? Yeah. This is a door switch. So this mounts on the side of a container, and as soon as the door closes, it shuts off the cache. And as soon as it opens up, it turns it on. Or the opposite, right? You can wire it with a normal normally closed, so that it, it's uh, it will actually turn off when you open it, and then turn on when it closes. So again, it's that's up to you, however you want to wire it. And I don't think this has the normal normally closed, but they do come that way. Um, these are again the same type of switch here um, that you could use on a door normally normally closed switch. Um, this has a roller on it, so if you do use a door, it kind of helps uh, roll against the door to shut it. Yeah. Um, and this has the normally normally closed. So I can get it to focus there. Uh, switches on them or areas. So again, you can wire that however you want. Um, they come in many different sizes. And in fact, if you look at this one here, this is the exact same as this. They just put oh. a little a little lever up here to push the button back there versus having the, the toggle from the arcade push it. Gotcha. So or, or if I had to say the way it probably would go is somebody was selling those micro switches with the long beam on them and decided, hey, the cheapest uh, arcade switch we could make is not to put the beam on. <laughs> and just stuff in this plastic case, right? Excellent. Yeah. Cost reduced and uh, new use. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then there are pressure switches. So this is a pressure switch. 
Uh, and this is one that I've used several times. In fact, I had this one planned for a cache that you actually had to remove um, certain items in a, a correct order. Otherwise, an alarm would go off. So yeah. when this is shut, um, you don't have a circuit, right? But as soon as you open it up, it completes the circuit, which then sets off an alarm system. So this is a pressure switch, right? So, um, yeah. You can have it either way. This activates uh, when it's let off pressure, but you can have them the opposite where uh, again, where the normal, normally closed comes into uh, play is as soon as you step on it, it'll activate an alarm. So I same thing, pressure switch. Chad, turn sideways a little bit too so we can see that from a side view. There you go. Now do it. Just so you can see. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, just, you yeah. Close it, right? Yep. This actually is the opposite, right? So this actually unactivates the switch, and then this activates it. Can you do so, it the other way? Yes, you can make it the other way, yes. Uh, this one you can't because this is not made that way. And what we actually use these for, these are fire extinguisher alarms. So a fire extinguisher is fairly heavy. We put right. them on there and it shuts it off. And then you have an alarm system. If someone removes the fire extinguisher oh, it opens. and it opens up, then it actually starts to alarm. So okay. the door alarms are the same way, but they're using a reed switch on there. Right. Um, and it's then we... So oh, some yeah, ways, uh, a few folks have kind of pinged a little bit about um, you know, shocking people with these switches and, and so on and so forth. And uh, may, maybe in jest, maybe in not, but just as a general comment, anything we're working with, 12 volts and under, uh, is not going to be anything bothersome to anybody. Uh, these are all relatively low voltages. We don't, we don't want to get into uh, house voltage. We don't want to get anything higher than that. But 12 volts, 9 volts, 6 volts, none of that is ever going to be an issue for uh, whatever you're doing. Um, if you short wires together, it's not going to be catastrophic, things like that. So it's, it's, it's nice because it's a relatively safe right. uh, volta DC voltage to work with. Right. Cool. Now, if you start using line voltage, then you need to start thinking about that stuff. No, you need, you need to not do that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, a lot of, several of mine are line voltage. Well, no, but I mean, everything you've got switches are, is but... step down, step down to lower voltage. Yeah. yeah. We're not using um, boat, boat batteries or anything like that. <laughs> no. Well, it's twelve volt, right? A boat I guess water. it is. Yeah, you're right. So, so. Um, then you have rotary switches here. Okay. Um, that's like this, and this is a switch because you can actually push on it. And I don't know if you can hear that, but if you push on it, it actually activates a switch. So, and then you can turn it, which turn then click. Uh -huh. change. I don't know if you can hear that. Yeah. Uh, I might be able to turn up my click, quick, 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 quick. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it yeah. clicks, right? Yeah, it clicks. Um, actually, it for... I, I have something I can show you though. You can make it for a spin. Can you do that too? Make it. Look... Yes. Oh, so you can turn it as well. So you can change the direct. You can change it this way, and then you can push on it to activate. It. So this is a cache that I have. That's a crack the safe cache. Mm-hmm here and um oh, so yeah. this uses the exact same switch i just put a fancier knob on it um and so in order to start this one you push on the button and now you can see uh, i don't know if you can see yeah a little bit you're good yeah mm -hmm. so anyways there's an a b uh and now if i turn it there's a line underneath there that let me see if i shut this off Nope, didn't do anything. Anyways, there's a line underneath the, the letter that yep. changes. And then if you push down on if I want to change that letter, you, you could hear it beep. Yep. All right. So that's actually being the button. And then you can adjust the, the digit on there. Right. As well. So which is kind of, this is a hard one to see. But if you see me at events, this will, I usually have this one with me. I carry this one with me yeah. to most events. And then this has that toggle switch that Dave was talking about. He had on his caches that turns it on and off. Right. That's awesome. Yeah, as as Arduino switches goes, it's it's uh, very very uh, sexy and functional with LCDs. That's a that's a great. Uh, it gives you a lot of capability without throwing switches all over the front case of your uh, cache. Yeah, and these are good switches. And honestly, uh, Dave programmed that switch action on there for me for that cache. Um, so it takes a little bit of programming that I actually don't know. So, um, but it's it's a fun cache. There's a lot of good comments on it. And then the other one that we talked about, the ones that light up, 
uh, here. This is the LED that lights up when you turn yep. it on. Perfect. Power and it has that. Now, a switch we haven't talked about is a keypad or buttons, right? Those are actually buttons as well. Um, and there are several different types. So you have these, these type here. This is what's called a, a four by three keypad. Mm -hmm. And this is a four by four. Right. The other one might be a three by four. I don't remember which. I think it's a four by three. Uh, and then they also come in these here sticky uh, pressure uh, pressure. Yeah, uh, forget exactly what they're called off the top of my head. Ones and these are these are nice because they're waterproof um, uh, and they're cheap. They're inexpensive versus the other ones. Right, and they're so. solid. So if it's out in the wild, you're not going to get dirt and stuff in, in between the the keep the the keys. Yeah. So that's kind of nice. And I use both of them on my caches. I like the look of these, but I like to be able to feel pushing a button. Sometimes when you're pushing these, did I really push that? Yeah. You know, so, you know, I like the feel of a, of a real button myself. Um, and then did I talk about the slide switches? Not yet. The only, thing I, the only slide switch I had in, <laughs> in my shop is – uh, is this one. So I had to bring this up. So this is just a real basic slide switch. I don't know if you can see it in there, but it's pretty, it's exactly what the name says. It's a slide switch. So you just slide it back and it turns on and you slide it forward and it turns off. Okay. So real simple slide switch. That's cool. Um, again, I wouldn't use that in a cache just because someone could leave it on and the cache will die, but it just depends right. on what you want to do when you build it. Yeah, I think, Chad, one of, one of the things uh, for a catch you can use that for is you can get them with a, a little bit longer um, pole on them so that yeah. they would stick through another piece. So if you had a piece of plastic sliding back and forth with a slot in it, you could push it enough and it would click that slide switch. So it, it it's not a door switch. It's not used for other things, but you could use it for linear motion, uh, detecting something moving far enough in one direction or another. Um uh, by sliding something with a slot in it across it. So a little just, you know, instead of that short little nub on it, it's got a little higher uh, top on it. So they work, they can be worked inside of caches too. Yeah, and you can get the slide switches too that actually will slide several inches like what you see on the uh, control panels for people who edit music and stuff, how they slide them up and down. Um, I don't know what that part's exactly called. So you can get them fairly long. They actually have some that will actually turn by themselves um, to zero. So if you actually have a puzzle that has to be in a certain location, if you get it wrong, they'll all return back to to zero or to the bottom on their own. But uh, anyway, there's there's so many different things out there. We're just going to cover what typically we use in caches. Yeah, there, there's a there's a motor drive on those, and and I actually yeah. have used two of those now. So I used one for the Love Boat, and I've used one for uh, Hey Rocky cache, one vertical. Yeah, you make the boat go back and forth. Yep. Yep. Nice, nice. I, I've looked at them to purchase them, and I'm like, oh, should I do it? And then I'm like, no, because it's just going to sit there because it, I don't I don't know how to program that. And yeah, it, it's more complicated. Time. It's certainly more complicated for programming, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so from here, we'll let Dave take it on some of the electronic caches. So um, one thing I didn't do real quick here to show you is I actually did have a slide here of the – arcade button to show you the nut, the body, the connectors, the normally open, normally closed, uh, and everything like that. But this is this is pretty much exactly how it works. Yeah. And now I know you can open those up and get at the inside. Yes. Son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we talked about we talked about some of these. So this is getting a little more on the electronic side, um, but not all of it completely electronic. Uh, we talked a little bit about these with, with the batteries and controlling. So um, the, the bottom left, the magnetic reed and the magnetic switch, which is just a, a door switch with a magnetic reed switch inside. Um, nice for door uh, opening, door closing to power things on and off. Doesn't even have to be a uh, um, Arduino style cache. But the warning is on these reed switches is they don't take a lot of current. So essentially you demagnetize them or they stick and fuse together. They're already stuck together because of the magnet and you put enough current through it, they can't separate. 
Uh, so that burns them off pretty easy. But they're they're good for simple uh, sensing uh, on on doors. I had to throw in a Hall Effect switch because I keep calling Reed switches Hall Effect for some odd reason. Um, but basically, it's a magnetic sensing uh, piece of electronics, and that can be uh, utilized for probably more um, magnetic related puzzles than it would be for um, uh, door switches and things like that because you're going to need some electronics uh, to go with them. But anyway, so magnetic style switches, um, certainly viable. What's nice about the one on the bottom there is you get it anywhere close to the switch and it'll go ahead and uh, um, deactivate or activate um, the door kind of a thing. I'm going to get the question a second, leave it up there. The magnetic reed switches, I've used those glass reeds, and they're real easy to break. I mean, they're really, really fragile. Once everything was put together, it worked great, but I'm not a fan of the glass reed simply because they're just mechanically a challenge to handle and uh, uh, be reliable. Um, I haven't personally, the question here is, have you ever built a cache with an old rotary phone dial? Uh, I have not done so, but I've actually got a couple of empty phones both push button and uh, rotary style in the storage here. And I think one of the very first reasons I wanted to do Arduino was to do a foam cache. And I haven't done one still yet because I got distracted learning how to advance my skills to do so. And I just haven't, haven't gotten to it. So um, not necessarily a difficult thing to do. A lot of YouTube uh, items out there where people show how they do it, share their code and so on. So it's a very valid uh, um Type of switch to use. Phone booths are cool. Phone booths are cool. Yeah, that's uh, not sure how that how it knows it's a nine versus a six or versus a you know the old some of us that remember rotary dials. If you did it wrong, it know it knew you didn't do it right. So <laughs> it counts. I looked this up once because I actually have a rotary dial phone that I was going to make a cash out of, but. Uh, it, it counts the the clicks, and I I can't remember off the top of my head how it. Right. Exactly if you works. dial a seven, it actually rotates back and hits seven the seven different switches as it goes. Is that it makes seven it? pulses essentially. Oh, okay. If you dial a one, like, it's one switch. It's the distance. Yeah. Yeah, I remember it's kind of like the rotary type thing, right? But, well, a little bit different than that. Yeah. Remember. Yeah. So on the on the 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 other switches here, um, I've got the software switch there this is definitely uh, an arduino friend it's something i've used in a lot of caches it's nice because if i have switches on uh, cache i can turn the power on with the normally uh, open side of the switch when you push it and then run the cache with the normally closed side so it lets you do both off of one switch uh, or multiple switches kind of a thing um, but these will handle amps and amps of current uh, if you needed it but typically battery operated items uh, you're doing much lower. Um, what says high power there, this was kind of nice. I found this in Amazon. I don't have this particular one. But if you have low current capability like an Arduino to turn on something or turn off something, if you really want to do something high powered, a big motor, a solenoid, whatever, that little board there basically takes the Arduino signal and lets you turn on latches and relays and solenoids off a 12-volt battery. So oh. there's a lot, of, a lot of ways to convert it and essentially plug it together. I mean, it's all, no, again, no soldering. Put the connector on one side and hook some wires on the other. So it's pretty easy to drive some high power if you need to off uh, things that are typically low power like computers. That's cool. Um, the last thing on the right there, I've been playing with this now. So I'm, I'm actually looking at... Um, the concept of doing a very, 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 very low power um, Arduino style cache in the sense of you put the battery in, you seal it up and it, it'll go five, 10 years on that battery, never turning off or turning off uh, and then turning back on. And for that purpose, I've got this shaker switch and I've got a played with a few of them now, but basically a coil of wire. Uh, if you buy a fast one, and it's very sensitive, the wire is very thin and it vibrates easily, just picking it off the desk, uh, you know, oh. lifting it, it, it contacts and it, it flips the switch or grounds right. the line. And so you can have anything you pick it up, it's on. 
uh, tightening. Now they've got some higher, thicker wire that they use in some other ones where you might have to shake it a little harder or you might have to tap it. Uh, but I really like the really light ones that essentially you put the cash together when someone picks up the cash, uh, portable cash, small cash, and gets gets it out of the, the mm -hmm. box. It would just uh, power itself up type of thing. Similar to that, tilt switches. Um, these, I had one on my telescope where basically it leveled your telescope to, uh, you know, parallel to Earth by just having that little ball switch. So basically you tilt it, the ball rolls to the contacts, turns it on. Um, good for positional caching. So you could have switches that you rotate in different directions. Oh, yeah. Know which way it is. And it's just a ball inside contacting some wires. And the last one on there, and this is very, very Arduino specific, but capacitive touch switches and this is essentially the thing where you get close to or actually just touch um, a wire or a point and the electronics essentially senses that you're coming near and it switches you over so i'm, I'm wow. playing with some of those now so i thought that worth mentioning mm -hmm. um, and actually capacitive touch switches on arduinos if anybody's got them out there and they're thinking of it uh, they work pretty well now battery operated and uh, there may be some other things to be concerned about but uh, they're, they're kind of cool they're kind of cool kind of magical so i like those mm -hmm. there's some, maybe some uh takes the switch to the next level up well, that's it. uh i use a capacitive touch one on one of my lab caches um that is this one the hand scanner oh yeah so real real basic people are like how do you get that to scan the hand it's really just a capacitive touch switch you put your hand on here and then knows you're touching it and then it, it powers up the Arduino and gives you a code word or give you a waypoint, whatever you want. Uh, when I give these out to uh, events, they they tell me what they want to put in. But it's a real simple thing. It's If you look in it, it just has a, uh, a micro Arduino and a, a capacitive touch switch and a screen. That's it. So real simple. Very cool. Uh, and then to touch on the uh, read switches that Dave was talking about, the glass ones, uh, the only ones that I've ever done in glass um, or used are these ones here. Um, and so what this is, this is a puzzle that you have to put these in the correct order. And the way it works is these, the read switches work off of a magnetic uh, to complete the circuit, right? So it actually pushes the two points of the, inside the glass, there's two pieces of metal apart, and it'll actually attract them when you get the magnet right over bring them together um, when you get it in the correct spot. So if you look on the back of these uh, puzzles or these pieces, there's a magnet in a certain spot that matches oh, yeah. the switch underneath. You just have to have a strong enough magnet, so rare, rare earth. So once you get a, these in the correct order, and now that I dumped it out, I'll probably forget it <laughs> without looking at it. But uh, hey, once, you get it, <laughs> yeah. once you get it in the correct order, it just completes the circuit. Sure. And then hands power back to a screen or a switch or whatever you want it to go to. So that's a nice way to use read switches. But again, the glass ones break easy and you have to have them in the correct order or angle for the magnet to actually catch them correctly. If they're on the side, it won't catch. It won't pull the two points together. Um, so they're a little bit tougher to, to work with. But do, anyway, do they make those that are not glass where there may be more of a plastic or something? Yeah. Like um, actually, I think these ones here, now, after I pulled it out and started looking at it, these actually, uh, come on, that's mm -hmm. going to be a lot of the screen. Yeah, these are actually the, pla yeah, uh, I do have, uh, some glass ones back here. I can show you, uh, what they are. Let me grab one. Yeah. I, I essentially, you know, you can maybe get non glass variants of it. Uh, but when you, when you play with the leads and torque the leads a little bit, oh. you know, yeah, it's, they're just more fragile. And, and to Chad's point, um, I did a I, I did a cache using um, 21 magnetic read switches, and uh, they were activated by seven segments. Let's call them little 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 segments, kind of a thing. Right. And had discovered that the polarity of which magnet was north, which was south, mm -hmm. affected some magnets in a way, and had to play quite a bit with it to get it to where you could reliably put a very small part on top of one of those uh, with other magnets nearby and get it to activate uh, reliably. Right. So this is hard to see, but you can see the two pieces of metal inside that glass. 
yeah are apart and you so that the magnet has to be strong enough to pull it together it's really hard yeah. to see on here but this is just a glass one and, and i've broken many of these putting them together unfortunately yeah and these yeah. come in lots of different sizes yeah and, and i don't i don't want to just discourage anybody from making a cache because I've, I've i've seen a few i've done a few chad's done some mm -hmm. um, they're actually very yeah there's a lot of flexibility in how you can put them together what you can do what kind of puzzle you can do um they make for very creative caches um you just have to expect maybe some losses um, i bought a bag of 100 you know reed switches for pretty cheap from china anyway right it, it, you know it's not like it's an expensive affair but i mean one, once they're as chad has done you know blue yeah. down or whatever down uh you're good after that you know kind of a thing you just have to handle yeah. it there so i i personally as a switch cash goes i think it's a cool way to do a cash i mean mm -hmm. I, I think we're, we're we're warning you about stuff that maybe isn't such a big deal because we both kind of enjoy doing that style no i, I love it and uh, you're right, Dave. Uh, the, the thing, you know, y'all made a great point there. In the fact that once you get it secured, it's not going to be a problem because right. people aren't going to be able to get to that part of it. I mean, if, if you secure your secure that portion of it, you know, you're fine. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then is there, was there any other ones that you want to talk about there, Dave? Um, this is maybe redundant to your demo of the nine box switches. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'll throw this out to the to the the mm -hmm. chat group here. So I've connected these normally open and normally closed switches, stringing them together just like the cache that Chad showed you earlier here. Um, what is the combination of switches you need to push? You've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. Can you you can look at this and probably figure out what um, and I think it's a total of four you have to push. Uh, what are the four switches you have to push? So maybe somebody will get that right. Ooh, yeah, that's a good that's a good one. Yeah, we can come back to the answer to that here in a few minutes. Close. Yeah. You gonna try it? I'll leave, I'll leave it up. Yeah, leave for a up. moment maybe. Yeah. 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 And and and, and to the to the point of this. Um, it's really just a connectivity issue. So close you can watch the line, and, and sometimes the line is broken by a switch, and sometimes right. the line is connected by the switch. If it's broken, you have to push the switch. If it's connected, uh, it's on the normally uh, closed side, then you'd need to push it to open the circuit or leave it alone if you want it to turn on the light. So, so, so you, you, want, you got some good answers showing up here. Yeah, I was just gonna look look at the slide to get the answer, but I figured that actually would pop it up, so I better not do that. So if you flip back and forth between those two slides, uh, if you can, it might look like it's pushing the buttons. We'll see if this works out. You want me to go to the answer? Yeah, yeah. I think we got a, a whole bunch of people who picked the right one there. Okay. If they're lined up, just flip them back and forth. I don't know if it. So Chad was correct. Good job, Ed. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it looks and like you see when the when A is pushed, now it's connecting the circuit. When D is pushed, it's connecting. And if you push C, it would open it up and the light wouldn't go on. So that's the very fundamental principle. All you need to do is come up with a really clever puzzle to go with it, or even a so so sure. puzzle, just a fun puzzle. And uh, you can glue one together and wire it up and crimp a few things on it. I, I think it is something very manageable and you could do a whole series of these. Yeah, that's neat. Yeah, that's fun. And we'll be covering that exact puzzle in uh, in June. So um, if anybody has any questions or actually if they decide to build one between now and June, I'd love for them to share uh, some photos of what they've done uh, with us so we can actually take a look at it and maybe talk about it on the show. Yeah. Send anything like that. That's a good segue to mention the uh, email address, gadgettalkpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, send us photos and such. Uh, I think in, that's is that's Instagram too, right? Gadget Talk Podcast. Yes. It's same thing, Instagram. Uh, and if you build a cache and you place it from the show, uh, take us in it. Um, so that'd be the at Gadget Talk Podcast. Yeah. Um, this is how to tag us. Perfect. Not the hat. It's at. So yeah. Um, 
Yeah, Chad, I had a little, maybe a nugget to throw in. Um, you talked about removing the LEDs from the um, the switches and putting them back in and changing the resistor if you want to make it brighter, change the colors, things like that. Um, I don't know if this is something you've, you've done before or not, but sometimes I, I, I'm kind of lazy. This is one of those little flat uh, batteries, you know, the... the I don't know if I'm hearing it. But a button battery, I think. Button batteries, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Thing. And what I really like about these is is they're relatively low voltage, and they're right size for an LED. Oh, cool. Yeah, that if you ever want to know which way to hook your LED, you can just sit on there, and it'll give you the There's direction your which one's the positive, right, and which one's the negative. Or in this case, it's a it's a white, it's a you know clear LED, you can't really tell what color it is until you light it up. But I have one of these, I keep this little battery on my desk all the time to uh, be able to just quick throw it on there, confirm which side's the positive side. Sometimes the leads have been clipped off, so the longer one, you can't tell which is which. And then this normally would be off, but actually if I flip this one around, it's green in the other direction. So this is also an option where you can have two colors in one LED, so your button could be red or green. Sure. Uh, in which case, you could light it green when it's correct and red when it's long and stuff like that. So, anyway, so I just thought to share the little little button battery thing. That is cool. Uh, that's been in my my desk for a long time, and I I, I use it all the time. Just to, <laughs> easier than looking for the flat edge of the long lead, just to know which is. Yeah. Good. So we'll talk that out there for you. It's a great tip. And those button batteries on the LED will last a long time. Yeah. Um, in fact, I have uh, some. I don't know if anybody has seen these. This is just a wristband slap bracelet. I'm not going to slap it, but it has one of those LEDs in there. It uses a, a button cell inside, and, uh, and then it has a change, a color changing LED. So this whole thing lights up different colors. So if you're at, out caching at night or whatever, um, it's just kind of a fun thing. It's it's fun for kids. I actually thought about making a bunch of these for an event so kids could actually put them together. Uh, and stuff, but yeah, the button cell in there uh, with a color changing LED will last three or four days of it. I think it's on continuously, is what I think I found on it. That's cool. So those are fun. Yep. So, um, so next week uh, we're going to be talking about we'll be building a cache, or not next week. I'm sorry, in two weeks. Two weeks. Yep. Uh, we'll be building uh, the toggle switch uh, lock decipher system so it'll be a momentary toggle switch there'll be three of them and you'll have to throw them in the correct position to uh, activate the led then to get the uh the combination code so um i there's a part list actually on the site at geocachetalk.com and then if you go underneath gadget talk and parts list is that correct Gary? yes um and then you can look on there now we attach the Amazon shopping list if you want to buy them on Amazon, or you can purchase them yourself. Now, when you're looking at the list, there are LEDs on there. You only need one LED. So if you already purchased a pack of LEDs in the past, you probably don't need to purchase LEDs. Um, drill bits on there as well. You probably don't need to buy another drill bit. What I'm doing is I'm just putting all the parts needed. So if there's a new person building the cache, um, they'll know exactly what they need on there. So look at the parts list. Uh, and decide what you actually really need yeah. down there. So, and that will be using the toggle switches, the, the on off on momentary switches. And the ones I put on there actually do have the, if you look on here, uh, mm -hmm. at this, this is the rubber uh, yeah. weather protectant case. Yeah. So um, those are the ones on there. You do not have to have these if you don't want them. Uh, I'd recommend it if you're putting on the outside of an ammo can, mm -hmm. uh, but if you're putting on the inside of a cache, you don't have to have it. Uh, I've never tried how to see how long these will toggle switch will last in weather, but I would imagine not too long. Um, but you can give that a try too. Uh, on that list there, I have an ammo can. You can do either plastic or metal. That's completely up to you and what you want to build. So. Chad had a question too. If, if anybody else has any questions for tonight, please put them in the chat room. But he's asking about uh, how you normally uh, secure those, I guess. 
the source for the buttons. Yeah, where, how do you normally secure them? Uh, Banggood is good. Um, they're inexpensive Chinese stuff. They could take a while to get from Banggood. Um, I so a lot of times find Amazon is almost the same price. Yeah, uh, and, and you used to get Amazon fairly fast, but now it seems like stuff that's prime is a week or two out. And uh, but mm -hmm. um, I I prefer the Amazon myself just because it's a little bit easier for me. But I've used Banggood. Um, there's several other shops just like Banggood. Sorry there. Uh, there's this uh, shop here. Now we're not advertising for them, um, but this is the same type of thing, just like a Banggood. Um, okay. And they sell. There's catalogs. They sell all kinds of stuff on there um that you can look at uh and then this is this is them as well there's just a bigger magazine but same thing you go through them just like a bang good but amazon works good and then i have a great electronic shop here in the area that uh, i shop at if i need to right but if you have a good shop uh or place to purchase them from uh shoot us a, an email um at the gadget talk podcast at gmail.com Yep. Uh, and let us know. I'd love to share that if uh, with everybody else who's looking at purchasing product. No, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and, and then same thing with, uh, uh, if you have an idea for a build coming up where you have questions about an idea of a build, send us, an e uh, shoot us an email on that. Um, if it's something that we think is, will fit into the show or a build, maybe we'll cover it on a, on one of the live builds. Uh, especially if you, aren't exactly sure how to make it, we'll show you exactly how to make it. So just can't be too complicated. We only have an hour. And uh, Chad puts out the parts list uh, during the first week of the month. So uh, you've got plenty of time, hopefully, or at least if you get or if it gets you get right on it. Although Eric said he bought his this week. And he's supposed to be having a Saturday, but normally <laughs> – Things that will, will, I mean, we will put the parts list out first of every month. Yeah. And hopefully that's enough time for you to, to get whatever odds and ends that you need. And um, yeah, we'll, we will repeat if we need it because, again, because some people don't maybe not see it. But yeah, if you go to the website, go to Gadget Talk um, under shows, you'll see uh, the different. So, like, if you want to, if you want to build, say, April's build or 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 uh, march's build you can go back and the march build list is still there and will always be there at least probably a year's worth before we put it somewhere else on the website but yeah yeah exactly um and yeah unfortunately this week was a little bit or this month was a little bit longer because i ordered the parts and they took longer to get and i wanted i wanted to make sure that everything worked perfectly um before i put the list out and uh so i ended up putting the list out the morning that the parts showed up and i ended up having to change some of them because it was a little bit different but yeah wasn't a big deal got done quick that was yeah. good we appreciate yeah. that so, yep and uh yeah so the one for june will be out uh the first week of june no problem yep looking forward to it i think it's gonna be a fun build this uh in in a couple weeks great yeah. All right, Dave. Anything to add? You want to talk? Uh, tell people a little bit about yourself and how to get a hold of you. Uh, if they have any questions. Well, I'll, I'll throw out. I saw a question in the chat room here, so I'll throw out one okay. comment. Yeah. Um, on on my little uh, doodad here. Normally, if you put an LED across a battery, you burn it out. So one of the nice things about these little batteries is both the voltage and the limit of current is low enough that they won't destroy an LED. If you're running three volts or whatever kind of thing, a lot of LEDs will run off right off the battery. So don't do this, you know, put five volts or six volts across an LED. It just melts, you know, if there's no resistor in there. Right. But you can take a naked LED with this little tiny battery and uh, you'll do fine with it. So the, just to mention, I saw in the chat somebody mentioned resistor. Yeah. Yep, you always need a current limiting resistor, but this little battery, that works great for us. So. Just for a quick um, tip. I'll, yeah. I'll pass out. I, I'm still, I've got an email uh, address, uh, get.wired.gc at gmail.com. Uh, I have had a couple of folks uh, send inquiries. I'll share code. I'll share a schematic. I'll, sh you know, share whatever I can with uh, folks. 
uh, to help them get started if you're looking to do that level of uh, project activity uh, or just banter and answer questions. So happy to do that. Um, enjoy this show and, and what's kind of nice about the show here <laughs> is I'm learning something every time too. So we don't all know what's going on. Uh, we all have things to share and experiences and you guys probably in the chat room have some to share as well that's different than ours. So it's nice to get together and share some of that information. Absolutely. Uh, Dave, was it? It's, it's get.wired. Dot GC. Dot GC at Gmail. Yes. Yeah. It, I tried to get get.wired, but it was already taken. So. Oh, oh well. Looks probably like that. me. <laughs> and I just like that. <laughs> that's it. Get.wired.gc at gmail.com for Dave. DJW House. How'd you how'd you come up with DJW House? Uh, DJW are my initials, and when I was first setting up our Ameritech accounts, that's how far back that goes. Everybody in the family got an email account, and I just put their initials. And there was a house number and a work number. Oh, okay. House, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I overcomplicated it dramatically, and unfortunately, as other people do, when I started cashing. I didn't realize there was a significance to using that. So I just oh, used yeah. my email connection. And now I have one that could be DJ who use. It could be, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of weird things you could pull out of that. So yeah, it's my initials and it's my house email. Uh, yeah, it's funny. Work emails and other things. Yeah. Um, mine was similar to the fact that I just didn't, I didn't think about it. I just used a, an email address I'd used before. So. Bounce, bouncy. Uh, Chad came up with a great one. Yeah, my my son came up with that, and again, it's something that I would have thought I I never thought I'd ever geocache ever again. I was just doing this with my wife and son, and yeah. didn't like it. And I thought oh, I don't care, just name it. So if if I could go back, I would change it. It would be something else. I don't know what it would be. A lot of people have asked me that, but you know, you're stuck. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, let me add to Ed Mullion's comment there. Yeah, uh, yeah go ahead. Oh, yeah, Mouser, I, I use Mouser. I use DigiKey. In fact, DigiKey is selling because uh, it's either ADA Fruit or SparkFun. I can't remember which one is in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, they can't, and so for so, so so their stuff is being sold through DigiKey. Uh, Jameco is another one uh, that I use quite a bit. You, you kind of want to hit that sweet part spot where you can buy things at a good price. And, but they'll also sell you something in low quantity and not charge you 20 bucks to ship it. So, oh, yeah. yeah, so I, I, for just information, if you're an Arduino looker out there, just for information, ADA Fruit, A-D-A-F-R-U-I-T, has a tremendous amount of tutorials that go with their products. And so a lot of times I'll just go out there and I may or may not use that particular item, but... Uh, I use the tutorials to learn from, which is really nice too. So, oh, cool. But those are great. Uh, yeah, DigiKey, Mouser, Jameco, SparkFun, ADA Fruit. Uh, those are kind of my go tos for US sources. Oh, excellent. We nice. might, Chad, something we might want to do at some point. We might, we might put a, we might put a little uh, doc up on the website just of places that we necessarily that we use we don't necessarily obviously they're not sponsors but you know it's a resource yeah. resource we absolutely can yeah um check them out yeah. at your risk yeah yeah absolutely yeah. if people want to again send to the email gadget talk podcast at gmail.com yeah uh the names of these uh you know i'll put them up we'll make a list and put it on the uh on our website yep so and then chad had a question about resistors i don't know what that means i was he? Oh, that must have been on your button cell. Yeah, on the button. Yeah. Okay. Got it. We'll be doing resistors. I'm resisting doing resistors on oh. shows because there's so oh. much to it. But uh, uh. We'll, we'll be covering those at some point. Uh, so, but there's there's a lot of calculations, but there are apps for that that help you out with it. So we'll probably have to have Dave back on. Uh, that yeah. To help that. Um, before we cover that, I'll make sure we cover uh, how to solder first. Yeah, and tinning wires, so connections. So, anyway, cool, perfect. You ready to wrap up? Yep. Let's uh, go ahead and wrap it up for the for this uh, week. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. It was a that was a very good show. A lot of comments in the 
chat room. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a like. Give us a subscribe. Uh, you know, and um, check uh, check out the, the the other shows. And uh, looking forward to the upcoming shows as well. So, again, thank you, Dave. My Matt, pleasure. Appreciate you always being on with us. And Chad, another great job, guys. So, we'll see everybody uh, next time. Here we All go. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night.